I'm also very, very tickled that uh, you guys kept your promise from uh, 2014, and we had a reappearance of the commemorative Irma Bombeck Writers' Workshop wine glasses. <laughs> I'm actually proud to say that I, uh, I made it home with mine two years ago intact. I still use it. I fill it regularly with liquid inspiration. Uh, I, I, I prefer red, but white will do in a pinch. Uh, some of you might know, I actually wrote a short piece about it called Have Wine Glass, Will Travel, that I included in my book. Uh, and I'd like to share an excerpt with you, uh, if I could. Uh, and so there I was, everybody, strolling through the Dayton airport, plane ticket in one hand, wine glass in the other. <laughs> and it wasn't even noon. A few people at the airport looked at me approvingly as if to say, yeah, that's awesome. But others were shaking their heads and clearly thinking, you really need to get your life together. <laughs> I went to the CNBC store outside of security and asked if I could have a small plastic bag for the wine glass. I figured something was better than nothing. And the cashier looked and said, oh my god, that's beautiful. You need to wrap that. She reached underneath the counter and she pulled out tissue paper, bags, and she wrapped it for me like a Christmas elf. And I joined the TSA line and I had my concealed wine wear and I didn't, I didn't feel like such a wandering lush, but I also didn't feel anywhere near as cool. And I thought, you know, now I understand the appeal of the flask. And maybe we'll have that at the next workshop. <laughs> I just never expected my parents to get old. It just never occurred to me that, that they would do that. And it bothers me. It really bothers me because it takes a village to raise an adult child. <laughs> and I, I actually want to write an adult children's book. Um, yeah, I do. It, and it, it would be titled, Where Do Old People Come From? And why are they so damn cranky? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 my parents are undeniably old now because they are doing what I call old people things. Like, they, they walk around the house mumbling. It's this constant mumbling, and occasionally I'll make out a word or two. You know, like mumble, 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 white people. What? I just finished cleaning, there are no white people in the house. Like, are you guys reliving the civil rights movement? Because uh, it's okay, we're free now. Um, so I am, I am spending a lot of time with my parents because I want to stay in the will. And, uh, <laughs> Because I'm not my parents' only child, but I, I am the only one they like. Uh, so I'm winning. <laughs> now, now, now let, me, let me quickly explain. Um, my parents weren't sitting around waiting for me to rediscover them. Okay, They had their own lives. They were doing stuff. You know, um, they, uh, they loved to go out to eat. My parents actually went out to uh, a place called IHOP. Do you guys have IHOP? Okay, I'm not sure. International House of Pancakes. Okay, yeah. Oh, they love this place. And they, they, they went out one day, and they came home, and they were so happy because when they asked for the check, apparently they found out that another patron had paid their bill. Yes, yes. And they come home, and they tell me, and they're all excited, and of course, I'm happy for them. And I, I post about it, posted about it on Facebook, and I said, Dear stranger, um, thank you so much. You know, you really made my parents' day. Uh, if you want to make mine, they eat there every Wednesday. <laughs> I, of course, now go out to eat with them. And, I, you know, I, I, I took them to breakfast, which is, you know, when I learned things. Uh, my mom announced suddenly, the doctor says I can't have eggs. My dad says, okay, how about an omelet? They said, Dad, when was the last time you had your hearing checked? 
He said, what? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they eat out. My parents eat out a lot now because they don't cook much. But they're not frivolous. They're not frivolous people. Like my dad uh, went to Burger King, and uh, his change was short by a penny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't shortchange old black people. Um, <laughs> Because they can tell from the sound of the change and the weight of the coins uh, that something's wrong. So he actually, you know, tried to rectify this. And the kid at the register was like, oh, come on, man. You going to sweat me for a penny? Sweat you. Son, you're lucky he doesn't take off his belt and beat you. I realized I, I, I had to learn uh, my parents' way of doing things because they have their own routine. Uh, apparently, the rule is lock up, leave the house, then ask if anyone remembered to check the stove. <laughs> Some of you have this rule. <laughs> now, I, I, of course, think it would make a lot more sense to check the stove before you leave. But what do I know? I'm just the kid. My parents actually, my dad actually said to me the other day, uh, when we were leaving the house, he says, do you think we should turn on the alarm? I said, well, how easy do you want to make it for the criminals? <laughs> you know, maybe we'll get lucky someone will break in and straighten up. Because <laughs> that's the other thing. My parents, they don't, they don't keep house like they used to but they don't want to admit it. And they don't want to let me hire a cleaning lady. Yeah, okay, I heard the ugh. <laughs> like, I, I literally, like, I walked into their bathroom one day, and I'm like, oh my God, this place is filthy. And my dad goes, I just cleaned it. I said, with what, hope? <laughs> I'm getting to know my mother better as a person, not just my mom, and she's a worrier, right? Like. I, we were in my kitchen, and I got up to go to the bathroom, and she said, be careful. <laughs> um, it, it's my hallway, not the Gaza Strip, Ma. <laughs> but she's a worrier. Like, she worries whenever my dad leaves the house. And part of the problem is, is that he doesn't turn on his cell phone, right? And finally, I couldn't take him. I'm like, Dad, what are you doing? Why won't you turn on your cell phone? He goes, mm, your mother might call. So apparently, that's the secret to lifelong love, everybody. Let it go to voicemail. Uh, <laughs> and it must be working, because they've actually, they've been married for over 50 years. Uh, I, I actually really don't know how, because uh, my, my dad is a horrible gift giver. Like, terrible. Like, when I was a kid, my dad gave my mom a set of steak knives for her birthday. Yeah, yeah, I knew that was wrong and I was only four. I was like, daddy about to get stabbed. <laughs> so I'm picking up prescriptions for my parents and I was really shocked to find out how expensive medication is, right? Like my mom, my mom dropped a pill and I was like, freeze. Nobody move. We're gonna find this pill we're gonna dust it off, and you're gonna take it. <laughs> and if you don't take it, I will. Cause we don't waste Xanax in this house. <laughs> I was dating a guy, and it was getting, getting serious, a little serious, and uh, he didn't pop the question, but he did ask uh, how I felt about having an open marriage. Yet I said, well, that depends on how you feel about having an open casket. <laughs> but spending time with my parents is changing that. Watching them age has been instructive. They are, they are teaching me that, that time and health are finite resources that we can't afford to waste. So yeah, we can procrastinate on a lot of things. What we cannot do is procrastinate on our passion.
And that's what the Irma Bombeck Writers Workshop is about. This is about coming together and reaffirming our commitment to our passion as writers and artists. Celebrating that we found it, honing the tools that we need to do it, and building the community that we need to support it. There are some very talented, prolific, and accomplished writers in this room. But there's also a lot of us who say, I'd love to, but. We procrastinate on our lives and our passions by saying, I'd love to, but I'm not smart, talented, young enough. I'd love to, but I don't have enough money, time, connections. Round of applause if you were at the luncheon this afternoon. Okay. With Kathy and Cindy, you heard them talk about this. We get scared, we count ourselves out, we tell ourselves no. But to quote the title of one of my favorite books by Susan Jeffers, maybe you know it, feel the fear and do it anyway. I, I don't like to make promises, but I can promise you, pursuing your passion is a lot better than living with regret. Shoulda, woulda, coulda is way more terrifying than ready, set, go. Are you waiting for the right time? There isn't one. Are you waiting for the right person? They're not coming. <laughs> Are you waiting to get permission? Give it to yourself and go. Because, you guys, the clock is ticking. We don't get to live forever, even with the right moisturizer. <laughs> we each have a responsibility to find and pursue our passion. Finding your passion is the gift you give to yourself. Pursuing your passion is the gift you give to other people. Learning how your passion affects them is the, that's the gift that re-inspires you, usually when you need it most. And so, I'll leave you with this. Uh, I'll raise my metaphorical glass to all of you, to Irma, and the amazing legacy that she created by having the courage, the simple act of bravery, of believing that she could write and then doing it. She showed us how little things in life can inspire us to do great things. And so the next time we procrastinate, and we will, may it lead you back to your passion sooner rather than later. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to call home and check the stove.